Bitcoin's alive, what you gon' do? Man, pool fees are high, high Order no, order no, order no Where does it stop? Nobody knows It's a revolution, ayy Bitcoin is the one, no substitution, ayy We should see in your glow, be it's order no revolution Welcome back to Ordinal Revolution. My name is Shizzy on this channel. We cover the entire Bitcoin Ordinal ecosystems. What's up, guys? We have an amazing show for you guys today. So every weekend uh, or Sunday morning, we kind of um, try to get all the information we can and we give you guys a weekend update. Anything you guys maybe missed, maybe you took off Friday and didn't look at the markets and then want to check back in before Monday starts. That's what this video is for. And we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, we were just looking through everything and there's a lot going on. A lot to be excited about. Uh, not not only with uh, the ordinary system, but with Bitcoin. Uh, the, that, the Dow Jones uh, was over $40,000 for the first time ever on a, on a close. And um, that was Friday. It barely made it though. It was like just over, but it closed above forty thousand. And Bitcoin really runs with with the the traditional markets though. I mean, it runs a lot harder than the traditional markets. But when it runs, it they need to run together, and this is all good. Uh, I've been saying it for a while, but I had the you know the sitting president for the first time in history is is you know uh, he's not doing good in the polls. Uh, so I think they're going to make everyone feel very rich. Uh, they're going to have markets at an all-time high. We could see the Dow up at like 50,000 by the end of this year. They're, they're really going to push this thing. I truly believe that. But that's going to make Bitcoin really get over the 100,000 100, mark. We think it's going to be over 125,000. And then next year, um, I personally think we're going to be over 700K. I'm saying that a lot, but that's all plan B. Uh, it's plan B's stock to flow chart. And I'm very excited for it. But let's kind of get into our show here. Let me bring in my partner here, as always, Mr. Yago B. What's up, buddy? What's up? What's up? Good morning. Good morning. How was your week, man? The week was good. The week was good. I felt like we had... You know, pretty good energy from our space, uh, considering there was a lot of, you know, uncertainty in terms of where Bitcoin was heading in the short term. But it seemed like that flipped, right? That flipped towards the end. We kind of had some price targets from um, Bob Lucas that we, you know, got from him. Um, we hit that target. We went above that target. And now for me, there's a new target. And, and so I feel like if we reach this target, if we pass it, the runes party starts in my opinion um could be wrong but that's kind of what i'm thinking yeah man so um i mentioned it in the in the monologue there but um the the dow jones is over 40,000 for the first time uh bitcoin has tight correlation with the dow jones uh and also not only that but the the dixie uh the dollar index is down a lot as well which is another correlation uh to my market go up bitcoin pump every time these happens together uh, you know, we kind of fly and we're about to entering, in my opinion, a, uh, a loosening cycle. I think the, the next one is going to drop rates a little bit. So what do you think about all that? Yeah, um, I think that this is kind of what happens in the election year, right? It, it seems like um, if there's not a ton of economic like favor for the public, then um they try to tweak with things and it, it seems to happen almost every election year that like you know the economy is is uh kind of a tool that gets uh used on both sides one to argue that you know we're we need better we need to do better and the other to kind of i guess uh mesmerize the the public and and to say okay hey things are not so bad if they start to you know change factors and and stuff and so um, that could be what's what's going on. Um, the Fed, I, I agree with you. I think they have a ton of pressure right now. And even if it's not the right thing to do, that 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 they might just go into quantitative easing because um, you know there was uh, some literature put out there to abolish the Fed, right? So you know they don't like that probably to be circulating. You know what I mean? So um, I think they probably trying to make everybody happy here in the next you know, six to 12 months. Um, and we'll see what happens. You know, it could be a great opportunity for people like us that have been here and we know how the markets react uh, to, to news with our government and, and stuff like that. So I don't know. I, I, I feel like everything's starting, the stars are starting to align. And, and so I have a good feeling in my gut. 
Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I think we run up until um, you know they got the debate. At, I guess it's uh, end of June, and I think we're gonna run. We're gonna run hard into that debate. Uh, so Biden can kind of we have the greatest markets this economy has ever seen, and really bloat and stuff like that. And uh, so I'm curious of uh, what's Bitcoin doing right now. Let's take a look. Yeah, let's go ahead and jump in here. I'm gonna show the hourly chart to start us off, just because. Um, so this is what I use to kind of give a, a short to midterm uh, sentiment. But this is where we were. Um, well, we were kind of hanging out here um, on was Thursday. So just three days ago, um, whenever we were doing our live stream, you and I were talking and Bob Lucas put that price target out. He said, if we go above 65.5 here, then May 1st, and let's go back to May 1st here. I think it goes all the way back here. He said May 1st will be the this cycle's low. So we're looking at with a candle wick down to 56,497. And what happened after he put that target up? We ended up passing 50 at uh, 65.5 here on the next day, right? And so once we hit that, you put the tweet out, tag Bob Lucas, said, Hey, <laughs> so May 1st, you're sticking to that, right? And um, that made me feel pretty confident. And it's crazy because, you know, when you have like the charting and the targets and all that stuff with people that you respect, you know, a little bit more than other people in the space in that area, um, it makes you feel good. Like there's positive sentiment. Right. And what started happening after we passed this, it continued up. Right. And we wicked all the way to 67, 450, um, kind of came back down and we're in like this, this mini like bull flag here. Now, for me, I feel like 70,000 is the big psychological, uh, you know, price point where I feel like if we get past this uh, and I, I put runes party here because I feel like that's when people can start really uh, looking at runes and feeling like, OK, we just went from really 60, 62. And if we go back to May 1st, 56,000 all the way back up to 70,000, there's people that made some damn good profit here right people that are really good and we have some of those in our space so if that starts to happen then i expect you know people to start to distribute some of their profits into these fungible token markets which will then kind of go into uh you know pushing up the ordinals market as well yeah and that, that's something that happens you know every single time um you see uh kind of, kind of people get more excited and when you do that risk comes on right so um if we do hit that that target number i can definitely see 100 percent. you can see a lot of that money um coming out and going into um you know some of these rune projects I and mean, some maybe some brc 20s and maybe some uh you know some ordinals um i think that's really going to light the fire underneath us and i think we're going to have a bit fi summer uh last cycle it was the DeFi summer and i truly believe that this summer and this is why we do a show called order revolution because i truly believe that this summer is going to be bit fi summer it's going to be a lot of bitcoin stuff happening it's going to be happening here and it's going to be happening with the rune tokens because you rune tokens are just that easy you know you know they're a lot they, they run the same as bitcoin right <clears throat> so it's going to be a lot easier for people to kind of do things i mean it's centralized you know that's what we do how to do things over here for now uh, very centralized manner until we get some op codes put in or you know maybe someone can come up with some recursive type stuff to decentralize it. it's gonna be just very interesting to see but i think once a project comes out and says something like that we're, we're just gonna fly whatever that whatever their token is or whatever it's gonna fly and then you might even get into like another airdrop type season as well yeah well i i don't necessarily think that we need the airdrop season because i feel like that you know, uh, we, we got pretty exhausted from that, right? Because you have to remember, like, if airdrop season is great for us, um, which I've never experienced anything close to the airdrop season that Ordinals had, right? Um, but then, you know, the, the problem with airdrop season is, is that, like, before airdrop season, we would onboard people to BRC20s and stuff like that because they got excited that you can trade fungible tokens on Bitcoin. Then airdrop season came and, and it was great for the people that were here, even for the people that came in, you know, a couple months before airdrop season, because especially them, they're excited. Oh, wow. But the people that we were onboarding during airdrop season, those are the people that got hurt the most, if you think about it. Right. Because they were now stuck with, you know, their bags or, you know, buying our bags, buying other people's bags. And so, um, now they're the ones that are holding some of these, you know, prunes and stuff like that. 
with that being said, um, I don't think there's going to be a, a, another huge airdrop season. What I think is going to happen is they're just going to let the market kind of play out, which I think is healthy. Um, but people will see opportunities in certain runes um, that weren't necessarily prunes, like, um, you know, ones that have minimal pre-mine, um, small market caps with good, strong community marketing, right? I think Pepe Matrix uh, is one of them, right? Bitcoin Pepe Matrix is one of those that has like 15,000 holders, you know, $3 million market cap. That's a big upside for people. Um, you know, there's a couple like that, you know, like Winko Minko runes and, and, and stuff that is connected to Casey in some way, has a community, has somebody trying to push it behind, but the market cap is 15 million or below. Those are opportunities to me. Um, also, some of those bigger opportunities exist, you know, like uh, I feel like Decentralized is a huge, huge one that became a big one. Because it, it started at 100 million and it came all the way back down to like 30 million. I'm not sure where it is now, but I think it's gone back up. But those like 40. With the big team, yeah, those with the big teams, you know, um, a couple of those are op opportunities with a little bit less risk and probably more like 5x between 5 and 10x. But you can count that there's going to be a team that's working and trying to release something. Yeah. Um I, I think you were a little wrong though. I just think that there's so many uh tokens right now that have um a lot of uh pre mines that are just sitting there. Fuhu, uh magic internet money. Um, you know, there's a bunch of them that Satoshi. were pre mined and just kind of locked there. Yeah, locked there 20%. And I think you are right. Um, having that that uh the um you know the airdrop season being in a sideways market that we're just in, that was bad for for new people. Having airdrop season in a where Bitcoin is running. That I think that's completely different because I think that people are going to find ways to do things. And I think you're going to see a lot of staking, a lot of different DeFi type of stuff that, that's going to happen. A lot of like LP pools and things like that. Centralized still, but you're going to see a lot of that where you can lock these tokens up. And I think that it's going to be different in this type of airdrop environment when Bitcoin's a 70, 80, 90, when it's just constant, you know, buying and locking up. And I think there, a lot of these airdrops are going to happen because you're going to be using their, their product, right? So there's going to be a lot of stuff happening where it's like, hey, if you use our decks, um, you're getting points. Those points are, are the, is this rune and this points are these runes and these runes. And I think that airdrop season, because your people are going to be playing with it, and then you're going to see, you know, uh, YouTubers that don't really cover our space and hey guys, there's a potential airdrop of this one, potential airdrop of this one. That's going to bring in mass amount of people into this ecosystem. And I think that that will be the, when, uh, you know, runes kind of gets to that $10 billion market cap, hundred million dollar market cap. I think that's all coming. I think we just passed 1 billion and I think, you know, a hundred X from here is easy, but there's gonna be a lot more tokens to come on. So it's not going to be all these tokens, but it's going to see, you're going to see magic internet money come with a hundred million dollar market cap. You're going to see, uh, potentially, you know, other ones that are just sitting there that got hundred percent pre mined that are just sitting there, but, uh, the, the, the company or the, the team is waiting for their product to launch. Yeah. Well, I think that's a little bit of a different atmosphere with airdrops compared to what we, we just went through. 100%. What we just went through, like it was like a bunch of meme type of projects airdropping. Right. So to me, that that doesn't it's totally different than like when Arbitrum had their airdrop or Aptos had their airdrop. Those are actual chains. Right. So yeah. it, but even so, like dApps that can be usable. So this when you said that, I immediately thought of Liquidium something like fluid tokens, exactly. which those are very usable utility based, profitable businesses. So that's different, um, you know, as opposed to doggo to the moon by this pre rune prunes. I, we can't go through another thing like that, in my opinion. Yeah. But what we can go through is something like you said to where more, I guess, like uh, there's more of an incentive to uh, use their product because of the airdrop but you know that like there is a product at the end of the day. And 100%. I think that's something we'll see, uh, but it's going to be different than like these prunes because these pre runes from a market perspective and a, 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 like a project founder perspective, it was genius. It was genius. Cause like you think about it, like you're getting these people to buy into your idea with the prune. They're literally buying into it. Right. Cause like, yeah we got uh, airdrop them because we're ogs yeah. so but the, the 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 onboarders are buying into the idea as opposed to like they can actually sit there and say okay i believe in this product 
that is, you know, I can use right now to lend and borrow and I want to earn points. That's the traditional way. And I think you're right about that. We'll see more of that. We'll see less of the kind of, in my opinion, irrelevant need to, or I guess you could say like, yeah, no need to, to airdrop because what is the product? There's a couple of yeah. products with those, but most of them weren't. Yeah, exactly. And um, that's what I'm thinking too. I just think there's going to be a lot of, like as you mentioned, liquidium. Uh, that's going to be a monster airdrop. That might be the number one token that might pass all go to the moon in market cap, right? Right away, because it's actually has use case. And I'm sure they're going to enable some type of staking for maybe um you can get for lower fees or whatever. There's going to be something that comes with that token. Those guys just aren't going to put out a token without no type of something right and then you're going to see a lot of these tokens kind of go over to l2 uh we know uh like verothium decks are going to be taking in a lot of runes and a lot of stuff going to lp and then you might see other things pop up on these l2s that you're going to need these l1 tokens to get right so not only are you just taking them out of our environment but you're kind of like removing them because you're staking them over in a different ecosystem right and then you're going to see you know uh not just not just uh merlin you're going to see um bit layer pop on you're going to see these bit vms that are popping out of nowhere you're going to see uh b2 they're going to be taking in your um l1 assets because that's the only way they can be a side chain right there's no other way they need the l1 assets and the, a lot of the stuff's going to be removed um, from this chain and what's going to cause in my opinion an insane run-up for everything runes i think you're in a, if you are here and you are stacking runes right now i think you're in a good place yeah i agree i agree um you know it i'm excited about it because we like i said we've noted we've been there when the other like brc20 went up uh we were there when arc20 went up had its little run-up you know obviously um so um it, runes had a bunch of hype which i think was actually probably in, when we look back hindsight we're gonna say okay maybe it was good that it crashed in the beginning you know because because then it doesn't get over exhausted right away yeah. right and then now once the the big run up with runes happens we we get to experience that actual pico feel of of what runes like will actually go through yep 100 percent all right, let's get into our uh, first topic here. Um, this was pretty big. The largest Bitcoin ordinal loan to date uh, coming in at $368,000. If the borrower Ooh. repays the loan, the lender gets $15,000 for a 60-day loan. Absolutely insane. Um, it was NodeMonkey8052. Uh, was just vaulted um, on Ethereum via our good friend, Jake, uh, gallons company, uh, emblem vault, uh, that loan was taken to arcade.xyz. What do you think about this dude? And then the guy, um, uh, ended up buying up uh, some ordinal, um, some, uh, ETH projects NFTs, over there. Yeah. NFT. Well, so yeah, first of all, I want to congratulations to Jake. I mean, CEO, yeah. and then right out the gate, this is a huge, you know, uh, bridging. Of, of an ordinal asset over to the ethereum side so i think this is huge for uh emblem vault i want to congratulate them because this is really big news um and um i mean it's a sick alien node monk right like we know yeah. that the aliens go for a lot and um i have it up if you want to check it out right yeah, here, real quick yeah. but yeah so this is it right here is it, it looks like he has a sailor hat and the zombie eyes or whatever those demon eyes or whatever but yeah the aliens are the ones that go for the most. And um, I don't know. I want to ask you, though, like, do you pay this back? I mean, it seems like he probably has a strategy because he did like buy a lot of board apes, mutant apes yeah. and stuff like that. And with $368,000, I'm sure he grabbed quite a few. So um, it, it, it seems like he's strategizing to be able to pay it back if needed. You know what I mean? But like. Yeah. Right out the gate, like three hundred sixty-eight thousand dollars for this alien node monk. Would you just take that straight up? <laughs> well, it depends, right? Like, um, I I think no monkeys are you know kind of sitting bottoming here. Um, I truly believe that. So for him, he's like, I could sell it. Yeah, I could you know probably get this if I could sell it, and then I could jump in some projects. But what if I just took a loan against it? Right. And then bolt up the project, everything I want, put a 60 days in, which is smart. And that's kind of why he did arcade instead of liquidium or fluid is because he can get the 60 day over there. Right. Like a longer term. And obviously, you know, I think it's really smart. Like he's banking on kind of what we're thinking about this next 60 days are going to be up. You know what I mean? I think everyone thinks it's going to be selling mango away. And I think we think it's the opposite. And I think he's planning on that as well. But let's just say he buys, 
you know, bored apes, mutant pot, like mutant apes, and like um all the things over there, moon birds or whatever, buys a bunch of it. They could easily double, right? And then he just takes his profit, gets his, his alien back, sends that back to Bitcoin, and then he's sitting on a bunch of amazing uh NFT projects, right? So I don't know. I think he's definitely taking a gamble. And worse comes to worse, what? You know, he just you know sold his uh his monkey that he probably got you know nowhere near the price that he got he takes the win there either so it's win-win either way obviously he's uh he wants to double it or triple it but i mean could be good either way man i I yeah yeah uh obviously this guy has, has put a lot of thought into the strategy right um if he has an alien node monk unless he got super duper lucky on the um initial uh dutch auction um i'm sure he acquired this and so if he does if he did that he has a lot of capital meaning that he probably has some pretty good you know smart people around him to kind of help him guide him through the space um or he's just really you know experienced uh, either way like i definitely feel like there's a lot of strategy going into this um and like you said you know all if he buys several of these all they need to do is double and from a perspective of like how down they were like on the ethereum side you know no matter what i think like most of us that have experience in the space overall crypto space believe that there's going to be an alt season at some point right uh, regardless if bitcoin goes nuts and stuff actually the more that bitcoin does go nuts the the more possibility that it's going to be a more aggressive alt season uh, it might not be like 2021 because that was ethereum's breakout in, in my opinion um but it still will people will be able to make good money in my opinion eventually and and when that happens it's um it's you know i feel like it's it's a, a given that the nft market's gonna gonna go right it's gonna go yeah. up to you and so you know just how long is he gonna have to wait that's gonna be the question you know what i mean because i yeah. think in my opinion i think that ordinals kind of go up and down a couple, maybe a couple times before ethereum nfts really start their um run yeah. up. But think about the, the the loner, right? The person who gave up the money. Uh, they're bull. They got to be bullish on it, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. They're even thinking it's going to it's going to hold its value or it's going to go up in value. Um, yeah. so that, this could be a million dollar ordinal, right? Yeah, here, yeah, right. You know, so, when, when they were talking about like those those uh, million dollar apes and stuff, they were obviously ones that were more rare, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, so yeah, I, I even he's got you got to have some marbles to do it, <laughs> but. But uh, I guess he found some guy that is like, okay, I, I, I think that like the rare node monks will probably get close to seven figures or at least double the, the value of what, what he got in. I mean, double is huge, right? I mean, double is huge, right? Yeah. So, um, but that also means that if it gets that crazy, that that guy's going to find a way to pay to back, back unless yeah. Ethereum NFTs tank. That, that would be a sad story. Again, though, it's a win because you made $15,000 for nothing. Right, yeah, true. I mean, well, so, two months, right? So, yeah, seven thousand yeah. five hundred for just lending it out, or yeah, yeah. I mean, so. he's making sixty. You know, if you know, potentially that's what someone who makes sixty grand a year, seventy grand, eighty grand a year for just loaning out some money, right? So, I mean, it's two months, but I'm just saying, like, that's what somebody who earns that gets in a month, right? So, uh, six, seven uh, thousand. So he's gonna earn that plus, you know, uh, more than that. But like, that's like a hundred thousand dollar salary for two months, like it's 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 know. pretty nice seems... yeah all right jumping over some other stuff here uh, i'm gonna move on to uh this one right here this is our good friend uh Naki, man it keeps killing it right now um there's a that last week they just long um they talked about odin swap which is going to be their centralized um swap it's basically going to be a uh, centralized exchange but instead of doing that you're going to be able to hook up your unisat wallet your x first wallet and just kind of play that way they will have liquidity pools and stuff like that and you know or is pretty trusted uh that's one company i wouldn't mind locking myself up in the lp pool obviously there's risk involved but i think you're gonna be earning good deals from that but that you know that's not financial advice that's just my risk tolerance not yours but uh what do you think about 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 this um they, they just kind of locked in a uh, partnership with unisat um they're launching uh you know digital assets they're, they're going to be launching digital assets to make it much easier which is the odin swap what, what do you think about 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 this partnership with uh ordzard and unisat well you know you kind of hit the nail on the head with nikki being 
you know, in the space and their their platform being a trusted platform. Um, not only has he been in the space for a while, but he's he's met several people, including us in person. Yeah. Right. So his face is everywhere. <laughs> you can't can't forget Nick Eve, I feel like. Right. No, so he kind of puts his uh, fingerprints on on everything. Um, so there's definitely this like trust that's been built up in the space uh, with Nick Eve. You know, so um, I, you know, I think you and I both uh, know that centralized centralized projects and stuff have had difficulty in the past but not all of them majority of them do well as long as there's a good you know system business model all that good stuff right so um you know that is what we're limited to here guys and so you know what i think nakeep saw is he kind of jumped on the ghosty train and said you know why not give the you know community the the people in our space what they want um until tech gets better to be able to decentralize and so that's what he did what it seems like he's doing with odin swap and so um we see it worked very well with ghosty up until now at least from a business model standpoint right so yeah. i think he's going to be one of the only people offering this type of thing in the beginning and i think people start to copy once they see success but um I'm happy for him and I'm happy for odds are, odds are. Um, and I think the people that end up holding this runes token, if they, you know, once they release that are going to benefit from, from Odin swap as well somehow. Yeah. And you know, they're passing out. Uh, you're going to get benefits uh, by swapping on, on Uniswap, but getting, getting the assets to be able to go trade on Odin swap. Right. So you got to get the assets from where, if you're somewhere, if you're not holding them. So you're going to be able to use this pass to kind of get, a kind of reason hold the pass after the token air drop, which is smart. I think Nakeem's really uh, thought about this, and uh, he's you know with Casey coming out last week and saying, "Hey, like let's not you know we don't have to go L 2s Let's think about you know maybe um, ingesting like you know potentially some centralized stuff." And then boom, Nakeem uh, launches like talks about Odin Swap and got kind of got Casey's Casey's bl blessing on that right by Casey coming out and saying that last week, and now boom, Odin Swap um how, how big yeah. how big is of a partnership is unisat and what do you think about you know potentially casey being okay with this type of stuff yeah um i believe casey maybe even like was excited that this was going to be launched you yeah. know like because like i said they meet all or he's met him several times um so casey is kind of you know not without signing off on it signing off on it right and so i think that like um i mean he made some good points he said you know we live in a world to where not every single thing has to be uh, decentralized um but i think majority of the stuff we want it to be just because we, you know greed is a, a thing that that ends up causing destruction in our space but with that being said um I think there's an understanding within the ordinals ecosystem that, you know, this is kind of where we're limited to right now. And so the partnership with Unisat though, I think it's, I think it's smart move for Ordzar. Obviously Unisat has capital behind it. Um, I think Unisat is very um, calculated in terms of what they release, when they release. And so um, you and I were talking about this before we uh, start recording, but you know, I'm under in the in this camp that I'm. I feel like maybe I started creating not, not long ago about. You know, I think there's a lot of entities. There's no way that like with all the talented people in our space that there hasn't been like products that are ready to ship right now. And I think people are trying to be very smart about that because they want to ship products that are going to be highly usable. When once the indicator of Bitcoin has really started the ascent into the actual like aggressive bull run, and so you know what does that mean late later summer the tail end of the summer going into the fall during that time frame i think we're going to start to see release after release after release product release and i think unisat has a lot of stuff um because they have a lot of developers and they have a lot of partnerships that they're they're uh working with and i think this is a smart move by Ordzar. yeah and sh sh shout out nakeem shout out Ordzar. keep building guys uh we definitely uh can't wait to play with odin and uh, just excited for what you guys are building, man. Let's keep building. 100%. Uh, speaking of building, um, what the hell is spooky uh, from Ghosty? Um, they put out a cryptic message, and uh, I kind of uh, went hard. I was like, what the hell is this? I tried looking. For, like, I looked up everything, guys. 
and I could not find anything. But this is the cryptic tweet they posted for the spooky release. We've planned fun activities. So you can go to the site, ghosty.squirrelloot.com. You got to authorize your Twitter. I don't like doing that um, personally. It's just not my thing. But if you're interested in getting potentially whatever the spooky release is, um, whether it's an ordinal or another, maybe a tap token, we have no idea. But I went and asked them. I put it in here. Um, where is it? Where is it? You get the points. Let me see if I can find my tweet here from them. It's good spooky. Anyway, um, I just put in there what what is spooky, and then they put back what is spooky, when is spooky, who who is spooky, and uh, you know, I, I need to know, right? I need I need to know what this is. Uh, what do you think about this? Is any speculation on what the hell it is? Yeah, um, I just came up with some speculation just now. Um, I know that they're they released a uh, Telegram AI bot, right? And so I, I feel like this has something to do with that. Um, you know, I don't know if this is kind of like a, like a, maybe like a sister project underneath them, underneath the ghosty, like, you know, swap or whatnot. But um, we were talking about, you know, earlier in the show about airdrops. And this is, this is one of those uh, examples that this could possibly be that. They see a lot of the points uh, meta kind of going through right now, like liquidity and like really harping on that i think you're you're having like exchanges and and you know magic eden and and unisat and orzar has its system too and then um you know fluid tokens came out and said that they're gonna they're already calculating they haven't put it on the dashboard yet so in terms of utility projects i think that the point system is the meta for this cycle um it kind of started end of last cycle but now it's really picking back up and I think that that's what spooky is. I, I think automatically it's spooky swap for some reason when I hear that. But I know, me too. Um, but um, I think it's going to have something to do with the AI bot. But we got to kind of see, right? Um, I, I'm not a big uh, connect my social media to these yeah. things. But people do that. And I think that's just one of the ways to earn. Um, but I don't know. Either way, like I feel like Ghosty is, is really starting to crank things up. Um, in terms of in terms of their like reach right and exposure and and releases you know information they release information very well i feel like you know on the timeline we partnered with this now this product is available to, to swap those kind of things are very important and they're they're just really i'm impressed with the, the way they roll those things out because they still have like a minimal amount of attention in the space and in their market cap shows i think they were like below 10 million not long ago something like that so the upside is is really big but i think that you and i both were kind of like we want to know because there's obviously things that can be affected by a new token uh that comes into play so uh go see go see uh cash hopefully you guys can jump on the show i know we're trying to coordinate that but we can get some clarity in the next couple of days yeah 100 percent. and yeah if, if you're right but if it is uh, you know a bot uh you know telegram bot or something like that and potentially if you're by holding the ghosty token you get this airdrop or you know by staking this ghosty token you get this maybe it's a rune i mean maybe it's a um you know a tap token that can be a rune or who knows uh speculation is high with this i i just am very bullish on this team I've uh, been bullish for and them for a couple weeks now. Um, really, after I got re- back in the tap, because I just think with the tap, the tap token launch being on Coinless, there's gonna be a lot of um, liquidity coming into the tap ecosystem, and I think Ghosty is gonna benefit off that. And potentially, the Spooky token could be their their bridge token. Potentially, um, who knows? Um, just I just I I need to know. But uh, yeah, I'm very excited for what these guys are building. Yep. 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 And I feel like they, they're a team that seems like they can pivot really fast too, which is good. Yeah. I think that's always good, right? Because you, you in this space, you got to be able to be able to say, oh, crap, we got to pivot and we got to pivot fast and effectively. And they seem like a team that can do that. So 100%. And going into our next um, thing right here, it's uh, so HCX Global uh, and Bicket post the same tweet. It's a, It was an orange... Um, where to go? It was a uh, it was orange D. I'm gonna try to find it. I know Leonidas posted it uh, with the two of them in one tweet, but yeah, here it is right here. So they both posted this this D, right? And then uh, he went and did the the other the other two. But 
what happens if uh, HTX Global and Bicat both launch uh, Dog Go to the Moon next week and potentially maybe uh, Rune Coin and Pops Token and potentially even maybe some other other ones as well? And you, you know, we're already hearing the Krakens um, been testing it out as well. Could we see like this giant, you know, uh, come in and grab these tokens to put on exchange type type of event coming in the next, I don't know, two weeks? Yes, we could. We could see it. Um, I think HTC or HTX um, is somewhat maybe bullish um, for, you know, the Asian markets. Um, but um, I think Kraken would be a pretty big deal, right? Um, the the obviously the biggest goal is to get that Binance listing. Um, but I think this is a good start because like H HCS Global didn't come out um and start listing um BRC 20s and stuff, and neither did Kraken. So this is a new exposure to um some pretty big marketplaces that I think that the Bitcoin fungible token markets need. Um it, well we'll see, right? I, I think that maybe Kraken passed on BRC 20s because it wasn't like a UTX model token and, and something similar to, to being able to transfer in and out like Bitcoin. Right. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll really have to see, but this is for me, I feel like ACX global is, is really saying we're going to launch because I went to their Twitter just now and they posted like an image of like a, a dog, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so um, big kits, not obviously it's not that big. Right. And, and stuff yeah. but like, this could really start something, um, but again, you know, um, regardless if 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 this launches or not, I think like getting those larger exchanges that have more of a global presence, because I don't know anybody that uses HCX that's in my group, you know what I mean? And so like the Binance is the the Kraken would be good, um, you know, OKX stuff like that. Hundred percent, I agree. Yeah, I think this is a big deal too. I think that um, you know, once this starts to happen, it's monkey see, monkey do, and then all these runes because they're. I mean, it's obviously a lot easier for these exchanges to do it, right? There's no transfer inscription. It's just it's 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 not you know meta protocol on top of a meta protocol. It's more of a you know an actual just the same way Bitcoin trades. It's just easier, and uh, I think it's going to happen more and more. And uh, I think this is, you know, I think whoever gets that first moving mover advantage is going to be huge. Obviously, we've seen RuneCoin on OKX. And I think, you know, you're going to see it on HTX Global and obviously Dog as well and Pops as well. Because Pops is, you know, it's already already $200 million market cap. So it's huge. And uh, I think you're going to see three projects, four maybe four projects get over that billion in the next coming months. And I think it's going to be, you know, RuneCoin, Dog Go to the Moon, and Pops. Uh, do you see anyone else hitting that Billy mark? Oh, uh, probably not the first, not in the yeah. beginning. Um, I think those that, that's pretty fair to say those three, um, will be the first. Um, so yeah, but I do think that like there's going to be it, if Runes onboards a lot of people from outside of our ecosystem, then it's, it, there's going to be one, one that runs really hard. That's not one of those. And it's yeah. going to be one that everybody it's it's like pups. You know, we talked about this before. I, I truly, truly feel like pups ran so hard because it was mo like mostly people from outside of the ecosystem that came into the ecosystem and, you know, they missed all the early inscriptions. They saw, you know, frogs and then they saw node monks run hard. And then they said, okay, it's too expensive for us to get into those. Let's let's get our own meta going, and they did that, and I think they're going to do that with fungible tokens. Hundred percent, I agree. Our last topic here before we hit on the market updates is uh, Orange Wallet. Orange Wallet is uh, is launching this week. Uh, we're actually going to have them for an interview on Monday. Kind of kind of get into all that stuff. I know it's just not just a wallet, but it's much more. I haven't really dug into them too much uh, lately. Um, but we know it's a wallet. You think this is going to be uh, big? I mean, it's going to have to get pushed with a lot of the um, the marketplaces, right? So if the marketplaces do, don't bring it in right away, and we kind of saw this with Hordes Wallet from the Sado team, uh, it didn't really get a lot of push because the exchanges just took so long to integrate it, and then they kind of like uh, you know took a step back a little bit. Do you think this kind of gets integrated pretty quickly? Well, they. I, I feel like or or. 
O R N J orange, you know, that yeah. the token the ticker for their token, but I feel like they have more mul- more in terms of like multiple relationships in our space yeah. than Horde's wallet did. And Horde's wallet comes from like Sado mining, so it's a different world. Um and so I think if in the, in this space from what we've experienced the past year, I think one thing that we realize is that you have to be fully immersed in, in the space for people to really, there's a trust is factor here, right? Like, it's like, okay, these new guys, who are they? Where do they come from? You know what I mean? Like a, a great example of that would be a uh, bitmap Emporium. They, they, they curated their community for months before they, they launched. Right. Yeah. I think they did it right for being someone that, try to start a newer project so i think orange eight have been here for months right orange has been here for months and they've been talking about this wallet they've been building up their community they have ties relationships um so i think that they will have a better launch than Orange wallet be- because of that or hordes wallet sorry yeah um but at the same time they're competing with like giants in the space right and i say giants because our space is small but they've been here for a while mm-hmm. right like unisat wallet uh xverse but i feel like it doesn't matter because that should I, I feel like if, as long as they continually market their wallet and there's great features with it they have to really highlight the features that make them st- stand out and i think they have a shot of, of really getting some of the market share but we got to see what the wallet what features make the wallet better because i know they were talking about a swap before yeah 100% agree. I, if they do have like a centralized swap that they, you know, day one, day two, where it's like, hey, that'd be pretty big. Um, but we don't know. I'm not going to speculate on that until we talk to them uh, tomorrow. I think we have an uh, interview with them, probably be out on Tuesday. So look out for that. I'm excited for this team um, big time. So we'll see. Yep, yep, yep. All right. All right. We'll kind of jump into, uh, you know, what everyone really watches for um, the updates. We want to get it first. We got the digital market update, the rune update, or the BRC20 update. What do you want to take on first? All right. Well, I don't know. Let me let me try to get this BRC20 update here. Um, I feel like that's a good one to kind of start with. Sounds good to me. All right. Let me get my, my filters set because I know we, we did this before um, all time. There we go. And we'll go by market cap. There we go. Okay. So BRC 20s volume, you know, it's, uh, this is all time volume. So I just, let me do one thing real quick. Uh, okay. So look at there, you can see sats, sats volume is $9,000. So volume is definitely trickled down. Uh, pups coming in at 25,000, right? So the volume is, I just wanted to show the volume that the volume in BRC 20 land has definitely gone down. Yeah, but if we're let's look at the the market caps though, because I think that's very important for BRC twenties. So, the top market cap is already, and it's very close to a billion dollars here. It's 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 well, pretty close, right? Nine hundred seven million. So last time we checked, I think it was like eight hundred something, eight hundred fifty million. That obviously changes along with Bitcoin's price. Bitcoin's price has been going up a little bit lately, but they come in at number one. You have Sats at number two at six hundred and thirty-nine million dollar market cap, and then Pups at one hundred and forty-five million dollar market cap. So, this to me is is still pretty shocking. You know the fact that there's that many still here. Um, you know you still have about five thousand holders. Do you remember what Pups holder count used to be? Um, I think it was. I don't think it was much more than that, honestly. Um, it, it might be at six seven thousand, but I don't think it was that high. Yeah, so the, the token's $18, right? So it's still actually respectable, you know? It's not, like, horrible. Um, and I think there's, like, 7 million of these. I, I got to look at the uh, yeah. the total supply again. But are you shocked that the, the market cap is still, hundred, like, right at $150 million here? I am. I think I thought when, um, you know, they would go to that rune token, this would go to zero. Um, but they're holding this, guys. They're definitely pushing it but that's the thing too is like you know if to, in order to sell it you got to find a buyer right so it, if nobody's buying it and nobody's selling it it's going to still going to stay at a high, high market cap right so if True. no one's willing to keep dropping it under 18 no one's going to willing to buy it above 18 then you could see this drip and drip and drip i mean this could be the beginning of the end for this brc 20 pups but then you know the the rune pop uh token it's going to fly because that's going to get listed on exchanges too. Like I said, BRC 20s are just hard to list on exchanges right now until there's an upgrade of some kind. But um, 
Yeah. But I'm curious if there's yeah. any activity. Yeah. So, I mean, the past 24 hours has, has yielded about $30,000 in volume, but it's one of the higher ones. Yeah. You know, because yeah. like BRC20 is kind of low, lower overall right now in terms of volume. So, you know, this is just kind of shocking to me. And I feel like until this gets fully bridged over or whatever situated, then um, it's going to be hard to really onboard a bunch of new people to the rune token. Um, well, not necessarily. I guess if marketing is focused only on that. But why is there just why is there that much volume still? Why is there 5,000 holders? You know, it yeah. just splits up the... Uh, Splits up the pie. But Rats comes in at number four, $140 million market cap. Um, and then you have Wizard here at $81 million. So Wizard's another one, but they haven't done their uh, Magic Internet money yet, right? No, not yet. <clears throat> so that still needs to happen. So we'll, I, I imagine this will get depleted. Um, their holder count 7,000. So this will probably get cut in half pretty quick. Uh, once the runes is ready to bridge over. And then they have Fram at number six at 58 million, Core at number seven at 44 million, Trek comes in at number eight at 44 million. And then you have Pi at nine at 38 million. And PIN is a big uh, BRC20 project on in the Chinese community. It's at 30 million right here at 29. And then some other ones that are uh, we've noticed in the past BTCS, remember how strong that Chinese community used to be? I mean, yep. They're holding up here, ten almost eleven million dollar market cap. But Ghosty just barely crosses over the ten point two one ten million dollar market cap, right? So um, this is the one that I feel like is just it's a pretty good opportunity here. Um, but um, we'll we'll have to see what happens with their their new releases and stuff. I just feel like the opportunity is there, but like the market cap doesn't match. Why do you think that is? Um, I just think that you know. Uh... Is, is they're not on any central exchanges um it's you know you're only buying it here and on magic eden and it's a very western um coin right it's uh european yeah. um builders US. u.s buyers and then china's really not in in this stuff uh china likes seems to feel like they like a lot of meme type stuff the the stuff that um actually has utility staking they're just not in um, and I'm not saying it's every Asian person. I'm just saying the majority of the buyers of this, I'm pretty sure, are probably, you know, Western or European. And, uh, you know, but I think that's that's going to change when um, this gets listed potentially um, on exchange. I think once TAP gets listed, um, you're going to see a lot of these other tokens get listed as well, because I think that's when they start messing with technology because tap, TAP's a, you know, transfer inscription right so they're gonna have to learn this stuff and i think once they do they're gonna be all right what well, other tap tokens can we potentially bring in and then they go to bring in potentially track and ghosty and stuff like that as well being brc20s but that they'll potentially have a bridge over to tap as well if the spooky token thing or isn't like a their their tap token or whatever it is uh but i just think that it's in time and this is a great buying opportunity for something like ghosty I think I think it's gonna be one of those where it's just like holy crap, how didn't we see that? You know, a lot of people are gonna be waking up like me and you're in this, but like a lot of other people are gonna waking up like I can't believe I missed that that opportunity. Yeah, and I think that there are utility projects that the Chinese community buy into, but it's their utility products, right? Our projects yeah. like PIN. That's something that they feel like is probably comparable. They're like, well why don't you guys buy in a pin or whatever we're we're all into that but like it's because i think they're like there's like this trust factor right it's like okay we yeah. trust these guys that they're building over here and then the western community is like okay we trust these guys yeah. at the end of the day like um that bridge i think is gonna be closed uh it's gonna be coming you know closer together obviously never closed completely but like you know it'll get better because i think I do think like communications has gotten better with the East and West. Uh, Bitcoin Asia was a big move by Bitcoin magazine and yeah. I commend them for doing that because it was needed um, in my opinion. So, yeah, so that's the BRC 20 weekend market update guys. Um, you know, until I think that, you know, these uh, best in slot uh, layer one foundation domo unisat releases their modular system that we're going to probably see volumes like this, you know, um, that are you know thirty thousand dollars in in the past twenty four hours. Like if we do the top, look. Oh, I was talking about pin right there. Like yep. the past twenty four hours, the Chinese community spent about three hundred thousand dollars on. That. <laughs> so they believe in in pin. That's for sure. Yeah. Um. 
what was Pence market cap? Makes me a little interested in that. All right. Yeah. So, and then you have four. Like, this is another one that we don't pay attention to. So, you know what's wild? And it's a crazy speculation, uh, you know, thought, speculative thought. But, like, the RC20s could be kind of like Asia's, like, thing kind of yeah. um and then runes is is more of the western thing with a little bit of sides playing in both you know what i mean yeah. so we'll see yeah i think it's smart to kind of do that you know um if you're asia it's kind of like take that on and hopefully you know they can do something of an upgrade for that and uh see what happens but yeah i think you're right i think uh brc 20s might be asians play and they say hey you guys keep your 13 letter character stuff that we can't even read and we'll keep the uh, the four letter stuff that we like. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, Chinese wealth definitely love money, and so once once the rooms really start pumping, pumping, I think they'll that they will join in on the festivities. But um, I think more as like builder communities and stuff like that, they'll say, okay, well, this is our ecosystem. That's the Western ecosystem. But both will have success. Um, but we'll see, right? We can't tell the future. But it's exciting times uh, for us to to kind of be here early. To be able to say, okay, we were there before both took off. Yep. And order of revolution, guys. If you don't know, we're always early, early, early to everything. We'll be continuously be early. So keep it here, guys. But we'll take you guys over to uh, the digital artifact uh, part of it. Um, I'm gonna give a quick refresh to this, kind of get you guys the uh, best prices. I'm always on the seven day. If that, if you're curious about where I'm getting my uh, numbers from, but we got the puppets. Um, the puppets have 79 Bitcoin in volume, sitting at 0.183. This is down a little bit. What do you think about, about the puppets being down a little bit? Do you think they recover? It, it's 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 really hard to tell, man, because, yeah. you know, I the fact that they had that, that energy and high level of energy for so long, or for that, I mean, I say so long, it was probably like three months, but... I can't deny how, how strong it was, but because a lot of the community was from people from outside in, I feel like their focus isn't still here yet, you know, or yeah. back here yet. So I, I do think that this could still bleed out, but I don't think the puppets ever die, die, because it, it will be easy to, to, to grab those people again, in my opinion. You know, 100%. I mean, 409 sales in the last seven days, you know, 79 Bitcoin in volume. It's pretty insane. Uh, I, I just think this this is probably a weekend dip. I can see this back over at a point, too. I think a lot of these are seeing a weekend dip. And I was actually talking to J25 this morning in the OSD uh, chat, and we were saying how, like, you know, if you bought Sunday morning and then sold on Wednesday like evening, you're up a lot. <laughs> so you're up, like, 20 30% on a lot of these projects. So, you yeah, know, potentially... Yeah. That's just kind of how it is. People just need money for the weekend, and the uh, the buyers don't get to their desk until Monday morning, and then they start buying again. So, um, you know, which could mean that there's a lot of institutional buying, which is could be insane for us. So, um, it could be big, but I can see these all getting kind of bought back up. No, um, but I I think the puppets are seeing seeing it slow again, maybe point one uh point one six, and then would have bounced back up to point two again. But this these all could be really good Sunday buys. Um, no monkey sitting at 0.92. I think this is a buy um, right here. I think this is this. The, I think it's top project. Um, I'm curious your opinion. Is no monkey the top project in this space? Yes, in my opinion, I think they are. I think they are, and, and it'll probably get a lot of hate because of that. But um, yeah, I just feel like in terms of performance and consistency since they launched, I mean, it's it's undeniable. You know, it's undeniable. Like, you know, um, I think that the art is different too. I know people are like, oh, it's all about the art. No, but the, their art is different. You know, it isn't like it, people can say, well, the pup's art's different. It's that MS Paint style. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Yeah. But for some reason, something about the Node Monk's art to me is very like 8 bit slash futuristic looking. Yeah. And I think it's it pulls off a different feel, a different look um but you know we'll, we'll see what happens um you know but i do think that node monks <sighs> node monks will be a very strong bull run peak play there'll be a good long term hold but i think there's going to be a big drop off after bull run to like you know the bear market as yeah. some of these others might not drop off as hard 
they'll bleed out rather than just a huge drop off. I, I, I see no months having a, like a cliff off and then like they'll work their way back up because of the lower inscriptions and stuff, because I just feel like they had like so much like capital back backing and, and stuff that they were, you know, I, I, I can't, everything's speculative, you know, yeah. but I would say like, they made a lot of money, man, on their launch. I keep bringing that up, but yeah, no, I, I hear you. No, I, I definitely potentially could see something like that. But I mean, the the punks hold up well, right? So that's one thing that I, I just kind of disagree with you there. I don't think no monks have that cliff fall. I think they they do bleed out in the bear market, just like anything the punks, else. But the punks are different because they didn't they didn't have they didn't make like over thirty million dollars on their launch. It was just they pay. I think they paid like people paid like fifty bucks. Whenever yeah, the, but the, those guys probably launched. got out pretty early, though. I think people who hold in the punks now, they paid a pretty penny. A pretty penny. I doubt that anyone who paid the fifty but, bucks but that, is hold. It. It's not about the reason why I bring this up. It isn't about yeah. like what the individual paid. It's about what the team has for you know their bullets. You know what I'm saying? Because like the team wants Node Monk to Node Monks to be number one floor wise because once it does come to bull market peak then no mucks can be that six figure floor right if they maintain yeah. as number one number one number one you know and then it all pays off for the 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 ones that they hold in their treasury because at that point they can make like yeah you know 100 million dollars in terms of profit right so yeah um that's kind of obviously that's completely speculative if you guys yeah. know me i love wearing my tinfoil hat but i love talking about this <laughs> stuff so Hundred percent. I'm gonna skip room pups because it's migrating. This is just uh, the thing. Whatever you're buying this to, uh, basically burn the inscription uh, to get the tokens. And then Ordinal Maxibus sitting at point three five. This is down. Uh, our good friend uh, Eric BRC twenty coins made a set. Uh, made a sale. This this you know he he, he said it on his Twitter. Um, but you know, what do you think about Ordinal Maxibus? Uh, are they bottom here? They're gonna go. They're gonna keep going. I think that they're gonna probably bleed out a little bit more, but you yeah. know that this is another project that they want to make sure that their floor is is maintained, right? Yeah. So um, I feel like they talk about another one that like the, 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 the <laughs> wow. orange the orange launch was was to the public was at one full Bitcoin, wasn't it? Yeah. So <laughs> it's something crazy. Yeah. yeah. So. so. But yeah, so I, I like I, I really can't see them going too much further. Uh, worst case scenario, maybe like if the entire ordinals market bleeds out, maybe like high 1.8, 1.9, 1.2, which is yeah. I know it looks pretty big dip off from now, but like that's not horrible if like everything is like going to shit, right? So I yeah. think that like they're they're gonna be another maintainer of their floor. And it definitely held pretty big. I mean, the pup, um, the, the monkeys hit 0. 0.8 and they fell down. I think uh, the orange eyes highest they got to was about 0. 0.5. Um, and then so they're only down about 30 percent, while the no monkeys are down about 70 percent. So, I yeah. mean, they're holding up pretty well. Quantum cats sitting at 0. 0.33. Um, you know, they still have that magic internet money token that you, they're going to get airdrop to holders of uh, of the wizards and quantum cats. Um, so, I think this that's the reason why this is holding up um, pretty, pretty fairly and has been. And then Runestone, Blob, and Arsic kind of still holding up pretty well. Definitely have some sales going on. Arsic is mining that uh, Runes, Rune Coin 2.0 or Season 2 or something. And then we have the Frogs. Um, frogs are back down a little bit close to 0. 0.05. What do you think about the Frogs? Can the Frogs ba uh, bounce again and rock it higher? Yes, um, I do think that they will bounce again. Um, I think that they're not going to have their big leg up until there's, you know, multiple either entities uh, with capital deploying and, and saying, okay, this is, it's time to make these things rock and um, let's make some good money here. Um, because you can see, I, I truly believe that the 140 sales are mostly organic here, like in the past seven days. Right. And so um, when you compare that to, you know, 409 from the puppets versus 249 from the node monks. It's, it's, you know, some of that is organic too, I'm sure. But also look at the listed amount. If you look all the way to the right, right? If you look at the listed amount for puppets, it's at 1089. Um, node monks is 1382, which is 
quite a bit, uh, you know, yeah. and then you go to frogs and it's eight ninety seven, right? Yeah. So like, it, it's just, it's, it's under 10% in terms of listed in a 10 K collection out of the, you know, the big ones. I think that, that the holders with frogs for the majority part, they're, they're really convicted type of holders. I think that, um, people are probably swing trading as well too. You know, like if, if you're constantly going from 0.05 to 0.07, I mean, that's mm -hmm. good money, <laughs> right? Yeah. 0.02 profit or 0.018 profit. Um, that's, that's pretty good. And, and it's like, almost like you're like okay i'm it's guaranteed that frogs are going to go back up to 0. 0.7 07 at least and then you you buy at this price like you said you buy on sundays flip on wednesdays it's, it, it yeah. could be like just habitual yeah could be until bitcoin starts to really start moving past that all-time high uh we did see a uh you know well, i, I kind of want to blame us for this but uh we put out a, a bitoshi uh you know blockamoto video um on i want to say wednesday and uh, then the uh, price of the bitmaps exploded uh, the day after the video was launched. Uh, what do you think about bitmaps? It, it got over a hundred dollars again. I think right now on, on the Sunday dip, we're kind of seeing it fall back a little bit. But what do you think about bitmaps? Do you think they have a future? Uh, do you think they're about to explode? What are you thinking? Yeah, I think that there's some stuff that's happening that we don't know about. And also, we've been part of this kind of uh, information initiative of getting pe you know, information out there to the public about, like, you know, different partners and, and the bitmap community kind of coming together um, and working on growth expansion and stuff like that. I do think, like, you know, there's there's plans for chains like Merlin Chain to release the, you know, WMAP token. I think that's exciting. Some whales that like, want to trade these fungibly. Um, I think that once, you know, there's this, this people are like, well, there's, there's a hundred and such and such that are released every day from the miners. Right. But that's not really much whenever you're thinking about the overall supply of 850,000 and it's going to be stretched in different places. Right. So, um, we had that vision months and months ago of like bitmap being stretched, the supply being stretched in different locations. We haven't even touched the surface in my opinion, because they're not being utilized in, in other areas yet, but that is going to come. I, I have a very strong feeling and conviction that that will come. But then you have other projects too, that are really like blowing up the scene, like bitmap Emporium. Mm -hmm. They have a pro they just, in that, they announced that project or that partnership with Forbes uh, web three mm -hmm. team. So stuff like that is getting bitmap more attention. I 100% agree. I agree with everything you said. All right, you want to take us over to um, the the runes part of the market update? Let's do it. All right, guys. So this is going to be based off of uh, let's go off of volume because so I think that's important for the 24 hours here. You can see Dog Goes to the Moon is the number one volume leader here. Uh, the price did go down about 5%. Uh, Rune's, uh, Rune Coin, Arsic, is the second in terms of uh, daily volume. The price is down about 11% here. Like, how do you feel about this? Because, like, the, the market cap's at 160 million. It was steadily at, like, 220, 230 for a while. Um, are you worried about this drop-off? Are you, uh, like, how do you feel about it? Uh, I bought the dip this morning at 11 sats. I bought another 100,000 uh, runes, um, rune coin or R6, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, I'm 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 excited. I was excited to see that this morning. And I think uh, by Wednesday, you're going to see this up at like 14, 15, 16 sats. It's going to look gonna look like an amazing buy, in my opinion. I'm bullish on it. It's uh, it's one of the few uh, that I, I'm holding. I'm holding. Uh, oh, actually, no, I did buy I did buy some. Uh, some more this weekend so i'm actually holding a lot of runes right now and uh you know in our next members video i'll kind of go over my portfolio but um yeah i'm i'm very bullish on our sick gotcha yeah and then uh pups world peace is number three at seventy two thousand in total volume the price dropped down 14.24 percent so it had a good run up last week uh once it was kind of reintroduced or introduced to like the the space right um but i think like this is just a, a healthy pullback um that we're seeing right now 
Then you have decentralized at 40 million, which to me, this is this is not bad because it got down to like 33. So this is kind of in a good yeah. spot. It's it's down 5% in price, uh, the number, or, or sorry, the price per token. Um, but it's a lot less than these others. You know, Doggo to the Moon, it's actually not bad either. But, you know, other than like the top four here, it's, it's actually, you know, kind of performing like Doggo to the Moon. But my thing with this is I feel like it took its hit and i think like from here it's like we could have seen the bottom for decentralized we could, we could have seen the bottom so it's one i'm bullish on i i, I do hold a little bit of this um wanko manko runes uh, up 34 <laughs> percent so i guess the furry narrative is uh it's coming, coming back. back here yeah 18 cents uh sitting at 13 million dollar market cap this is to me a sleeper project because or um token because it, it is pretty tied to Casey and, and his weirdness there. Um, then you have Donald, the Donald Trump. This one was uh, one, the newer one that was introduced into the top 10. Um, you see it, it's up 17.33% on price. Uh, market cap is under 5 million. So could be an opportunity meme if, if Trump keeps, uh, you know, trending, right? Then you have Satoshi Nakamoto down 10% in its uh, price here, sitting at 26 million. Um, it hasn't gone away completely, but it's, you know, it's not in the top like five anymore, uh, but it's there. And then you have uh, Fehu at uh, $20.32 down 1.36%. Um, and then you have uh, Runes X Bitcoin. Do you know anything about this one? Uh, not really sure. I think mean, wasn't yeah. that the that was the layer two that we talked about maybe I can't remember mm, I'm not sure I think it's a meme about like okay. Twitter or X so yeah the the market cap's right under 20 million but it seemed I, I don't remember this step you know consistently being in the top 10 so yeah. this is you know jumped in here and then waddle waddle pingu I don't know why this is still here but it's uh down 12 percent here and sitting at a 12 million dollar market cap some other notables uh you can see Bamp of Nakamoto yeah. dollar yeah. sitting at 37 million down 3.64% on the uh, price there. Odin, God of Runes. Interesting. I wonder what this is about. It's up 9%. Uh, $89,000 market cap. Wow. Pretty small. Yeah. Probably pretty risky. Yeah. yeah. The Guardians are up uh, 74% in price. The Rune Guardians. Wow. This was a pre rune uh, under $1 million market cap. So this might be one to take a look at. Um, and then Lobo, the Wolf Pup. Sitting at a lonely 16 at 12 million, took a big hit, uh, down three percent on the day. And that's uh, well, here's another one Bitcoin Pepe Matrix up 14 percent, sitting at three million dollar market cap, and Uncommon Goods at 28 down, down nine percent in value, sitting at two million dollar market cap. Wow, this one might be worth looking into once things calm down after sure right so yeah that is the runes fungible token market update for the weekend yeah man i guess we'll end it on that note guys um any last remarks uh for the week i do feel bullish like there's bullish energy definitely re-injected into our little space um and i do feel like uh it's because of bitcoin um so you know i'm looking for bullish Bitcoin price action for the last two weeks of this month heading into June. Um, we'll see what happens in June, but, um, you know, 67,000 is not bad to start this week. I feel like so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, we did add some new items to our store. I just want to highlight that real quick. Um, people have been, you know, asking us, you know, add some new Ooh. stuff. We did, we, we did get the goose and those, uh the, the really cool profile image here for t-shirt or hoodie or just regular sweatshirt we got some uh you know alude shirts up here as well in the pups world peace t-shirt as well so Sick. there's some new stuff there you can just go to our website and then hit the store tab right here awesome yeah man all right guys that's the show um we'll be here um monday to friday uh, 11 a.m eastern time 10 a.m. Central, 7 a.m. Pacific. I'm getting really good at saying that. Uh, so check us out all week, guys. We're going to have fun, uh, exciting shows all week. Uh, I want to thank our partners, uh, Fluid Tokens, uh, Traverse, 
and Vrothium Dex. Uh, we're going to be adding more partners if you guys are interested, if you're a, a project out there. And uh, please re- reach out to us. We want to um, definitely bring on solid projects that we know and that are trusted. And that is why we have Traverse and Fluid and, and Vrothium. Uh, you know, so re- really excited to have them on. It was a big week for us last week to bring on these guys. And uh, we're going to continue to progress. And uh, we're going to need backing to do that. And uh, these guys are going to help us with that. So and we're going to help them by getting eyes on them. So it's a win-win situations. So I just want you guys to know that um, that's why they're up there. Just so you guys know that, you know, we're being, you know, backed by – by some amazing projects. Yep. Yep. We're excited about that. Um, we're excited about the growth of, of uh, our brand as well as our partners brands. And um, you know, that one thing we'll say is that if you have a project out there, you're thinking about starting a project, just be consistent guys. Like when we started this, the show um, you know, like we had under a hundred subs. Right. And um just kept showing up every day, being involved with the community, stuff like that. So um, that that's what I would say is just stay consistent, keep pushing every day. Even if it's not a project, you just want to be a bigger community member, show up every day. And if you can't come every day, just be consistent with when you do come up. 100%. All right, guys, that's our show. We'll see you uh, tomorrow. Have a good night. Peace. We OG, we OG, or no OG. You're not bullish enough, yeah. Oh no, you're not bullish enough. You ain't got the oh no. I get stoned by the bolo. Bitcoin sets a holo, yeah. Experts on reload, yeah, yeah. You're not bullish enough, yeah. Oh no, you're not bullish enough. You ain't got the oh no. I get stoned by the bolo. Bitcoin sets a holo, experts on reload, reload Man, pool getting hot, everybody wanna rock, ayy Runes is coming, everybody on a night, ayy It's a nuisance, order no revolution, ayy uh, Order no revolution Yo, it's my guy for real, bro Runes though Got friends right now Yo, BRC420, bro Yeah, bro Yo, that shit on fire, bro, imagine if he in here ah. Yeah, lock it in the seal Murder. I got balls of steel uh, Nookie on the field Yeah, yeah this shit for real mm-hmm. With no calls I get so far Got a hundred phone calls That I go hard And they gon' love me Smoke weed, huddle back uh, I get shy, see Where my uh, Bitcoin looking lovely All this Satoshi's nothing above me